Good morning and welcome to our worship service today. And a special welcome to those who are listening by way of Zoom or Facebook page or our website. You're very welcome to join us. Our call to worship this morning is found in Hebrews chapter 10. And it reads as follows. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened up a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Let us hold tightly, without wavering, to the hope that we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his returning is drawing near. Amen. We're going to have our opening hymn, written by a gentleman who was once an Anglican minister, a man who as a youth was press ganged into the British Navy, received 96 lashes for attempting to escape the British Navy, and found him on a particular occasion on a ship off the coast of Ireland, off the coast of Donegal, where he almost got shipwrecked. He prayed to God and the cargo miraculously shifted in the hull of the ship to block a hole that was going to sink them. Don't know who it is yet? John Newton and his great hymn, Amazing Grace, and we'll stand to sing. Just before Julie comes up and gives our children's address, we'll have a word of prayer. Let's pray. 
Gracious God and loving Heavenly Father, we come to you again on this, our Lord's Day, and we come into your presence to worship you and to give you of our thanks and our praise for all that you are and all that you mean to us as those who have put their trust in you. We thank you this morning for the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and his atoning sacrifice on our behalf that has been able to reconcile us to you. We thank you this morning for the precious blood of our Savior. We pray this morning as our brother Donald would come and open up your word to us, that you would take all thoughts of the previous week out of our mind and all those things that would distract us. And Father, show us things out of your word this morning. Those things that we cannot see, show us. Those things that we do not know, teach us. And those things that we are not, make us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Julie's going to come up now and address the children. Thank you. Hello, boys and girls. You're very far away today. And hello to all the boys and girls at home as well. So, if I can have... We're going to talk today about the church and how the church is one body with lots of parts. So, as you all know, Jesus is the head of the church, and the church is the body. And when I was thinking of this, I was thinking, well, is that the church building? And then I thought, no, whenever I learned a wee bit more, I realised it was about all the people in the church. So we're going to find out a wee bit more in a wee second. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27 tells us, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. So boys and girls, whenever we become Christians, we become part of the body of Christ. Now, we're going to look at how our bodies can remind us about the different parts of the church. And we have a wee boy up here, and there's arrows pointing to lots of different parts of his body, like his hair and his head and his face and his mouth and his eyes and his ears. And I've brought a wee friend with me today. I hope you can all see him down at the back. <laughs> okay? So, I'm going to take his eyes off, okay? Now, without his eyes, he won't be able to see. And I need you to do a wee experiment for me this morning. I want you to cover up your eyes, or close them really, really tightly, and try and see if you can see through a different part of your body. Okay, shall we all try it? Push your eyes really, really tightly. Okay, open your eyes. Now, I tried to see through my hair and it didn't work. Did any of you see through any part, other part of your body than your eyes? Did you see through part, another part of your body? Your eye, what with your eyes closed? No. So are our eyes really important? Do you think our eyes are important? Yes. But our eyes are really, really, really tiny. Like if you look at the size of your eyes and you look at the size of your legs, and I think, well, I can walk with my legs. I can jump, I can hop. I could kick a ball, and all I can do with my eyes is see. So, are my eyes as important as my, uh, as my legs? Yeah, they're all important, so I'm going to give him back his eyes. Now, I'm going to take off his nose this time. So if I took off his nose, he wouldn't be able to smell all the lovely dinners and all the lovely smells around us. But what would happen if the eyes said to the nose, there's two of us? We're more important than you. There's only one of you. Would that be true? No, the nose is just as important as the eyes. Now, we're going to take off his mouth. Now, I want you to imagine you've got your favourite thing to eat in your hand, okay? My favourite thing to eat is Haribo. <laughs> so, you're not allowed to use your mouth. You have to cover up your mouth, and you have to try and eat with a different part of your body, okay? I think I'm going to eat with my knees. Okay, so cover up your mouth. Now, uh-oh, it didn't work. Could anybody eat with any other part of their body other than their mouth? No, so are our mouths important? 
Yeah. Now, we'll look at one more wee part of his body here. And that's his heart. Is our heart important, boys and girls? Yeah. But you can't even see your heart. Can anybody see your heart? No. But even though you can't see it, is it important? Yeah, it is. So I'll give him back his heart, and I'm going to set him down here a wee minute. Now, so now we're going to look at the church. So just remember that all our bodies have lots of different parts, and they're all really, really important. And in 1 Peter, we find out each of you should use whatever gifts you have received to serve others. Now, everybody in the church have got gifts and talents in different things. We're not all good at the same thing. So we're going to look at some of the people who make up the church and we'll see if they're really, really important, okay? So, in churches all over the world, we have pastors and we have deacons. We have people who look after the church and look after all of us. Are they important? Yeah, Abby, are the deacons important? Yeah, yeah, I think they do a really, really good job. We also have people who clean and people who make like lovely cakes and barbecues and stuff. And we don't always see these people, a bit like the heart, we don't always see these people doing these jobs, but they're really, really, really important in the church. We also have people who visit other people who are good at talking and listening and helping people whenever they're sad or lonely or sick. We also have people who are really good musicians and really good at singing. And I was thinking, you know, maybe some Sunday if I come into church and somebody said to me, there's nobody for the piano or the organ today. You're playing it today? And I would think, uh-uh. I think the best I would be able to do would be Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. I don't have a gift for music. <laughs> um, we also have our AV team and our children's ministry. Again, if we came to church and they said to me, you're on the sign today, there wouldn't be much sound in the church because I wouldn't know what I was doing. And imagine, boys and girls, if you came to Pathfinders or Holiday Bible Club or Sunday School and there was no leaders, I think it would be a bit crazy, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. So we need those as well. What about children? Are children important in the church? Children are very, very, very important in the church. Boys and girls, even so, though some of you are very, very small, you used to do a really important job. You pray for each other, you look after each other, you tell your friends all about Jesus. So already, even if you are really, really small, like the eyes, you are already doing a really important job in the church. So I find this verse in the Bible, and it's become one of my favorite verses now in Romans chapter 12, verses four and five. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So all of us has got one body, We've all got different parts of our bodies and all the different parts do different things. So in Christ we, though many, form one body. So when we become Christians, boys and girls, we become the body of Christ. Big, big family, we all form one body. And each member belongs to all the others. And like our bodies, our fingers belong to our hands and our hands belong to our arm, etc. In the church, we all belong to each other. We all love and care for each other. So, nobody can do everything. God wants us all to work together and use each other's gifts, talents, and abilities. Sharing the gifts that God has given us is what makes things work. And just to finish off, boys and girls, each one of us is special because that is how God has made us. God made us to worship him on our own and together as part of the church. And just as the body needs all of its parts to be whole, the church needs all of us so that we can grow in our faith, serve God, pray for each other, and be salt and light and go crazy like Chris told us a few weeks ago by telling our friends all about Jesus and how much he loves us. Thank you all very much for listening. Thank you, Julie. And I give some of the announcements. Again, a big welcome to all those who have turned out this morning. It's nice to see so many out. And if you're listening by way of DVD or through the internet, uh, we're glad that you've been able to join us. But we hope that in the coming days that you will feel more than able to join with us here uh, at church. 
We, we live, I suppose, in a, a day when bad news is, is all around us, but with some good news this week uh, in that uh, we are congratulating Chris and Carla on the safe arrival of Harry Carson, born on Friday and weighing in at seven pounds, 10 ounces. So congratulations to those folks and they'll certainly have their hands full this morning. Our missionary correspondence station, our little box that uh, we've been mentioning this last few weeks, finishes today. So if you haven't got pen to paper as yet and you want to do that, please get it in ASAP and Roy Greer is going to look after the posting of those. So thanks again very much to Roy for that. Our prayer meeting goes ahead again this Wednesday, both here physically in person and via Zoom. So please feel free to join us. Remember to keep praying for those who are unwell, undergoing treatments uh, and recovering from different ailments and those in our fellowship who have been recently bereaved. An update on Jackie's situation. Jackie's symptoms have not improved greatly, but thankfully they have not got any worse. So we're just hoping that there will be a speedy recovery there up at the manse. I also want to mention Herbie Dara, meet his brother, who at this present time is critically ill uh, with COVID. So please remember Herbie in your prayers as well. Last thing would be uh, our exit strategy. As I said, it's nice to see so many folks out. There is a tendency, the more that we get in the hall here, that as we leave, we tend to bunch up and maybe gather at the door and have a chat. And that's, that's normal and natural uh, in other situations. But we just ask that if you would listen to uh, the deacons this morning, as they would try and usher you out, uh, perhaps row by row, and try and keep your conversations brief and at a distance, and if necessary, outside the building. Uh, just bear that in mind, please, as, as you would leave. A very warm welcome again to our brother Donald Coulter. Donald's no stranger here, and I'm just going to ask Donald to come up now and pray that as he opens God's word to us, that we will receive what he has to say in the grace that he intends to send it. Thank you very much, Donald. Well, it's nice to be with you all again, and good morning to everyone. Didn't think I was going to get this detached there for a moment, so here we are. Well, if you have your Bible with you, uh, would you please turn to the Gospel of John? The Gospel of John. And chapter 6, please. That's the Gospel of John in chapter 6. And we're going to read verses 32 to 40. So that's the Gospel of John, chapter 6, and verses 32 to 40. And this is God's Word. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh me shall never hunger, and he that believeth me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. And that, the, and that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I come down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which hath given me I should lose nothing which should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Now we'll end our reading at verse 40, and we'll just commit uh, our time together here around the word before we come in prayer. Lord, we just seek in your help again, Lord, as we come to your word. 
Lord, in ourselves we're weak and therefore we need help from heaven. And we just pray, Lord, as we would come round your word now, Lord, that you would just anoint us with the power of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, that you would speak to the person in the pulpit as well as the person in the pew. And Lord, for those listening in by Zoom, we pray again that you'll minister to us, minister through us as we come to your word. And we ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, uh, Pastor Paul had rang me to see if I could uh, take this morning's meeting uh, some days ago. And actually, when he rang me, which often happens, uh, those are just a wee thoughts going through my mind. And I, and I really thought in particular uh, that that's what the Lord wanted to say to someone this morning. And it's, it's a wee thought here in verse 37 of our reading. And it says again, And that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. And actually the thoughts that I was having was some of the I wills of Jesus. You know, there are many promises people make this and they don't come through. But if Jesus says, I will do something, it'll happen. There's no uncertainty, there's no doubt, there's no question about it. Just thinking again about this this morning, I, I wrote down, uh, out of a commentary, someone said, every I will statement of Jesus is enough to address every doubt you have in the present and any misgivings about the future. And you know, we live in days of uncertainty, we live in days that we don't know what we're going to hear next. But there's wonderful when you come to God's word that there are definite certainties. And when you come and Jesus, from his word, says, I will do something, he'll do it. I will. And just for uh, a few minutes this morning as we come around God's word, I just want to think of a few of the I wills of Jesus which are sure and certain and definite. We might delve into one or two a wee bit more than the other, but just to run some past you the day and be trust that some of these I wills will be applicable. Trust all of them will be applicable to you, but perhaps there's some of them are very applicable to you in your situation today. And uh, the first one that uh, I want to share with you is found in Matthew 11, 28 to 30, where Jesus said, come on to me, come on to me. All who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We live in a restless world, don't we? And actually, I think it was uh, Augustine that said, Thou hast made us for thyself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it finds rest in you or in thee. And that's what it's like outside of Christ. We're restless. There's no rest in the sense of... and, and, and uh, so much going on in their lives, but the Lord Jesus this morning is this invitation. Uh, and I, I love that little word of invitation to come. I, I, I think, and I'm working from memory, it's mentioned over 3,000 times in Scripture, the word come, this invitation of coming. And one of these I wills that Jesus would have us today is to come unto me, to come to him, all who labor. See, there are people who are laboring for their salvation today. There are people who are laboring for their salvation in Ireland today. They're trying to work their way to heaven. And it's not working. There's no rest. There's no certainty. There's no definite in their heart that things are well with their soul. And yet Jesus gave us this wonderful, wonderful invitation. Uh, and one of his lovely I wills is, Come unto me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I might know, and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest, rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's a wonderful thing to be resting in Christ and in Christ alone for salvation today. And the Lord gives rest. He gives that rest where we can be content. I'm thankful that I had a great night's rest last night. Some nights I don't sleep that well, but I reckon I was snoring last night and had a great night's rest. So I'm ready for you today. 
and in the natural to have rest is a wonderful thing. Just your body so much different after you get a good night's rest. And my, we can rest in Christ for our salvation. And uh, there's just uh, a few applications in that. So if you're a sinner, and, and, and I'm talking, and just in case anybody's listening in, and you don't know the Savior, and, and you're hoping you might get to heaven, and, and you're uncertain, you can, this morning you can rest in this fact that you come to Jesus. You can come and have rest as a sinner. You can rest in Christ. You can be sure you're saved if you just come and rest in what Christ has accomplished for us on the cross of Calvary. As you just come in repentance and faith and trust Christ and rest in him and rest in him alone. He has done everything that's necessary for our salvation. We can rest for the sinner. I can tell you there's rest for the saint as well. We can rest in Christ. We get all troubled about many things and, and perhaps you are troubled in these days. Well, you know, you just want to spend more time with Jesus. Spend more time in his word. Spend more time seeking his face and just coming to him and you'll find he has rest. He has rest for the, for the saint of God. He has, he has rest for the believer, just to rest in him. My, we get troubled about so many things. And uh, sometimes there are many things that do trouble us. But oh, in those situations, if we just would find that time to as we passed, you steal away home to Jesus and rest in him, whatever your trouble may be. And even as a servant of God, you can get tired in the work. Not tired off the work, but tired in the work. And Jesus, he's never a hard taskmaster. He said to the disciples of one side, he says, come aside and rest a while. I mean, not a long time, I might add, just for a while. I think some take that too serious. And so there's rest. And this lovely invitation, thy wills of Jesus, he said, come to me, all who are labor and heavy laden, and I will, I will give you rest. It's a promise. Come to him. Come as a sinner. And you'll find rest in Christ for salvation. You'll find all you need in us. Even as a saint of God, maybe troubled, maybe, maybe disturbed by some matter, just come to Jesus and rest in him. Seek him through his word. Rest in Christ. Rest in the promises of God. Even though you can't see the way through at the moment, rest in Christ. And even for those that perhaps are serving the Lord and, and find it tired and tiring, well, there's rest for the servant. And you know, there's a lovely wee verse in, in Revelation. Uh, uh, whenever we go to glory, it's going to be that wonderful rest. And, and, and it says in Revelation, And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Blessed indeed, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors for their deeds follow them. Revelation 14, 13. And we have this lovely promise of, of God for rest. Not only rest in time, but a rest in eternity when all my labors and trials are o'er. And I am safe on that beautiful shore just to be near the dear Lord I adore will through the ages be glory for me. It's wonderful to be resting in Christ. I encourage you today as God's people Rest in Christ. So you'll get true satisfaction. Rest for your souls. Rest for your mind. Rest for your emotions. Rest in Christ. And then another we I will, just thinking on them, and, and, and Jesus one day called four men to himself, and he said uh, in Matthew four nineteen, and he said to them, and he said, follow me, follow me, and I will make you, fishers of men. And once again, you know something, and, and we had a lovely talk on the, on the body of Christ this morning, the church, and my, what lovely applications, and, and such a simple form, and yet so profound. And, and the Lord Jesus, he, he's calling us today to follow him. A follower of Jesus. You don't get saved and stuck. He says, follow me. It's a lifelong following. It's discipleship. And, and once you're saved, you start following the Lord. And the Lord wants us all to become fishers of men. It doesn't mean we're all evangelists. It doesn't mean we're all going to be uh, leading souls to Christ every day of the week. But I want to tell you, he came to these guys and he said they were just fishermen. They were ordinary men. In many ways, they were businessmen, but yet they were ordinary men. And he said, follow me. Follow me. 
and I will make you. It wasn't going to be an instant job. It wasn't going to happen overnight. He says, I'll make you to become fishers of men. I wonder in this uncertain time of our history, are we still in the business of fishing for men? Round straight, in district, in our families, in our homes. The devil doesn't want us fishing for men. He would close down every department of the church. He would tell you it's not a good time to be out fishing for souls. We need to be creative and innovative in these days and say, how can we appropriately be fishing for men? Because that's what he's told. He says, follow me. Follow me. Following Jesus. Boy, Jesus was always after the souls of men. He took all the different approaches. He preached to large crowds. He sat down with individuals like you think of the woman at the well. He, he, and, and he, he got ways of approaching them. Just to, to really study the life of Jesus and how he reached the lost. And I wonder, can I start a wee challenge today? Are you going to try and reach a soul for Christ today? You say, Donald, that's not really my gift, and you know. Well, you can pray. I hope, hope you have a wee list. A wee list of unsaved people. And you're praying for them. Yes, sir, we need to be praying for one another. We need to be praying for the situation in these days, but don't give up praying for the lost. And the Lord is still in the saving business. The church that Julie talked about today, it hasn't closed down. And uh, the Lord said, as long as the church goes on, on the early church of this year, he added to the church daily. Not on a Sunday. He added to the church daily such as should be saved. And you know, I believe, even the day that the Lord would begin pointing out, and he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. That guy know nothing about fishing. There's all types of fishing, isn't there? And there's maybe fishermen here. But one way or another, you get the hook out there. Some catch them in crowds by the nets. And there's all the different bait, isn't there? And there's children's ministry. There's adults' ministries, all kinds of ministries. Let's ask the question to ourselves today, Lord, make me a fisher of men. It has to be a priority. There's a priority. Follow me. Follow me. That's the, that's the priority, following Jesus. And you know, if we're really following Jesus, we we'll want to reach the lost for Christ. Reach the lost. Maybe it's just a wee gospel track. Maybe a wee relevant track. There are some written for this coronavirus time, by the way. Some good be ones. And maybe just have a few of them and say, maybe you'd like to read that. And then pray over it. Or, or you just have that wee bit of literature and say, Lord, will you lead me someone and, and I want to give it to them? Actually, and I'm now going off the point which is often usual for me. Ronnie McCracken, I think, used to be a minister of this church. And I think he challenged this church, this was many years ago, that the congregation that week intentionally would, it was else, I think it was three people that they'd do something, try and reach three people that week. And Pat, his wife, being a good wife, she thought I'd better do what the minister says. And the first person that week, or one of the people that week, was the milkman. He used to bring the milk to the door, didn't they? So I thought, well, of the milkman, the postman, and she got a wee track. I should give the milkman a track. And I think it was about 25 years later, I heard this story two or three years ago, about 25 years later, this man came to her and she says, you know me? No, I can't say you do. I do. Well, 25 years ago, I was your milkman. And one morning, you give me a little gospel track. And I read that gospel track. 
And through that gospel track, I came to Christ and I've been a Christian for over 25 years. Pat didn't even know that. Make me a fisher of men. Make me a fisher of men. And that's what Jesus would want us to do today, to challenge us, to make us fisher of men. And then, then another one here, and we heard about this, will not dwell on that. And it, it's foundational, isn't it? Jesus said, and I tell you, I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock, and the rock, of course, is Christ. That was a confession that, Paul, or that Peter had made, that he said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he said, on, on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And can I say today that the only, we'll call it organization, the only agency that the Lord has on earth is the church. That's the only agency. And, and in particular, the local church. And today we can get discouraged and we can't all gather together the way we'd, we'd like to and, 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 and all of that. But we heard a lovely talk on the church t- this morning. And remember, you're an important member of that body. If you're saved and redeemed by precious blood, we need to be part of a local church and we need to be a participant in the local church. And we need to be all prayer warriors in the local church. And we need to be enthusiastic about the local church. It's not an, it's a, not an option. Jesus said, I will build my church. And that means through the coronavirus epidemic, he's still building his church. And I would suggest to you, there are a lot of people thinking about, about Christ in these days. There's people questioning things. And we need to be on the ball. Are you in the ball today? Are you challenged about what part of the body you are? Are you a pew warmer? Are you enthusiastic about the church? And the Lord's still building this church. And I want to tell you what he says. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Coronavirus shall not prevail against it. The government shall not prevail against it. The old devil shall not prevail against it. He's going to build it. And I'm glad I'm a part of the body of Christ. I'm glad I'm a part of the family of God. And I'm enthusiastic because of the head of it. The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ our Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride and with his own blood he bought her and for her life he died. Oh, we can say, listen, our head's Christ. He's the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. That's who's building the church. That's the one I'm looking to today. Oh yes, we need to be praying for our government. We need to be I, I, I have a list of things seven days a week in praying. Uh, uh, it's, it's one of the, for the government and the day you pray for your MP. And I prayed for my MP this morning. Thank God he's a Christian one. But one of the days to pray for the local church. I reckon, you know, the greatest part in any society is the local church, the believer, the salt and the light we've heard about, the praying people in the community. Oh, the church is so important. And Jesus said, not me. Not a denomination. I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against her. The church shall never perish. Her dear Lord to defend, to guide, sustain, and cherish is with her to the end. Though there be those who hate her, and there are many do, and false, false sons in her pale against both foe and traitor, she ever shall prevail. View the fast building. See it rise, the work how great, the plan how wise. O oh, wondrous fabric, power unknown, that rest it on the living stone. The church. And Jesus said, I will build my church. Don't be, in these days, be encouraged. And be excited about the church. It's all the Lord has. Boys like you and me, the creators we are, but that's his church, the body of Christ. And I'm glad to be part of the family of God. Another important one, and I think very important in these days, 
And a, and a promise the Lord Jesus made before he went back to heaven in John 15 and 26 and also in John 16 and 7 he says, but when the helper comes or the comforter comes, whom I will send, send you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceeds, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness unto me. John 16, 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will help him. Help. But if I go, I will send him to you. The Holy Spirit. And thank God, and I wouldn't be on this platform this morning if it wasn't the help of God, the Holy Spirit. And we need to be every day Filled with the Holy Spirit. That fresh being, being filled. You know, when we're saved, soon as my all I ventured on the atoning blood, the Holy Spirit entered, born of the Spirit of God. And I was born of God. But we need to be filled with the Spirit. We need to be empowered by the Holy Ghost. As much we could, could say about that, but what I would say, you know why we need the Holy Spirit? Because he's the person, if you're going to be a fisher of men, well, you can't save them. You need the Holy Spirit to convict them. To draw to their attention that they're, they're sinners and need a Savior. And, and he convicts. And of course, he's involved in the conversion. As soon as my old life entered on the atoning blood, the Holy Spirit entered, born of the Spirit of God. He, he's involved in, 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 in our conversion. And, and he communicates with us. We have this witness within us, says the Scriptures. The Spirit himself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Romans 8, 16. And he helps to control us. And we should have the fruits of the Spirit. And I speak that to myself as much as anybody else. We need to be controlled by the Spirit of God. Spirit controlled. Spirit filled. Led by the Spirit of God. And, and if we're going to be of all these gifts in the church, he, he, he helps us, he gives us these graces for contribution in the church. We, we need the fruit of the Spirit. And you know about the nine, them segments of the fruit of the Spirit, but he, he gives us power. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be my witnesses. If we're going to be the fishers of men, we need the power of the Holy Spirit to see souls saved. And to give us just that power to call out on him, mighty spirit dwell in me, said the writer. I myself would mighty be, mighty so as to prevail, where unaided man must fail, ever by a mighty hope, pressing on and bearing up. And the Lord has sent the Holy Spirit. That's a promise that's fulfilled. He said, I will send the Spirit. Thank God for the Spirit. And God, for the day and hour that he came and convicted me and showed me I was a sinner and deep down in you was lost and on my way to hell. And, and, and he revealed that to me, the power of the Holy Ghost in conviction. And he's real. I will send the Spirit. And he's fulfilled another promise. He said, I will build my church. That's going on for 2,000 years. That's a promise. And then this one here, he says, I will come again. That's yet to be fulfilled. Jesus is coming again. Uh, John 14, 1 and 3, Let not your hearts be troubled. And there's many hearts troubled today. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Another way, I wills of Jesus. Jesus is coming again. He's coming for the church. He's coming for a blood -bought church. He's coming for you and I, and my will be in glory forever. This is a glad prospect for every child of God. We need to be excited in these days. Jesus is coming again. I don't know when he's coming, because the Scripture says it doesn't. But we need to be ready. We need to be on our toes. We need to be waiting. We need to be watching. We need to be working in these days, because Jesus is coming again. That should be an exciting prospect should thrill us. A steadfast promise, I will come again. A sweet peace and take you to myself. A sublime paradise that where I am, oh, where I am, Jesus in heaven, he's coming one day to take us to glory. Sorrows all past, home at last, ever to 
rejoice. A sure prospect. A sure prospect. I will come again. The promises of God, thy wills of Christ. And then this one that we read in your hearing this morning, John 6, 37. All that the Father gives to me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will in no ways cast out. Uh, another version says, I, I, I will never cast out. There's actually a, a lot of theology in that verse and, and that around it. I'm not going into that, but there's this promise of God and perhaps, I don't know there's anybody in church this morning. I don't know whether there's anybody on the Zoom listening in, but I can tell you uh, this is the promise that we have in terms of salvation. It's a rock-solid promise. Jesus said it. Jesus said it. He said, Whoever, or him, that comes to me, I will never cast out. What an invitation. What a wonderful I will. What a, what a, what a statement of certainty. It's for the individual sinner. It's for the whoever. It's for the him or her. For the young or for the old. It's for the individual. An individual sinner, him that cometh, or whoever comes to me, it's for the individual. Will you say, I'll come to that in a minute. You say, well, maybe not me. Oh, yes, you. And then, not only is an individual, there's an impossible situation. It says, him that cometh to me, I will never cast out. That's a, that's a good promise, isn't it? And to an invincible Savior, an unconquerable Savior. You're coming to Christ this morning. It's interesting, just, uh, and I was reading that when, when I got that call from Paul studying that there, just this wonderful I wills of Jesus. But in terms of our salvation, that we can know for certainty, if we come in through repentance and faith to Christ, he says, I will never cast you out. I'll never turn you away. And actually, Stuart Briscoe said in the original Greek, and I know no Greek, but these men do, in the original Greek, the verse 37 reads like a double negative. I will never, no never, drive them away. And John Bunyan, he was a great old Puritan. He was a tinker, actually. And the Lord saved him. And he wrote Pilgrim's Progress. And I think he wrote 57 other books. And he was just an ordinary man. He wasn't an educated man, but the Lord educated him. And the Lord changed him. And this was his favorite verse. Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. And he wrote a book about it. And the one verse, a book about it. And he had this certainty of that he came as even an old tinker to Jesus and he wonderfully, gloriously and eternally saved him. And in that book that he wrote about it, he said, but I, some would maybe say, but I am a great sinner, say you. And Jesus says, I will no wise cast out. But I'm an old sinner, say you. And this was written in whenever it was 16 or 1700. But he says, but I am an old sinner, say you. I will in no wise cast out, says Christ. But I'm a hard-hearted sinner, say you. I will in no wise cast out, says Christ. But I'm a backsliding sinner, say you. I will in no ways cast out, says Christ. But I have served Satan all my days, say you. I will in no ways cast out, says Christ. But I have sinned against light, say you. I will in no ways cast out, says Christ. But I have sinned against mercy, says you. I will in no ways cast out, says Christ. But I have no good thing to bring with me, say you. I will in no ways cast out, says Christ. And then Bunyan says the promise was provided to answer all objections and does answer them. Are you putting up objections for coming to Christ this morning? You saying he maybe wouldn't accept me. I'm this, I'm that, I'm the other thing. The Lord has wiped away all objections and this lovely I am of Christ. Him or whoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Oh, I just trust that someone even 
under the sound of her voice this morning, whether it's in this building or whether it's on Zoom or whatever, that that, that, that word, and I believe it is for maybe more than one, but it's certainly for someone. And it's time you just came to Christ. And the Lord is arms of welcome. And he says, him or whoever comes to me, I will in no ways, I will never, never cast out. Our last one, and, and then we'll bring our meeting to a close. And it just hit me the other day, and I believe it's someone again. And it's what Jesus, another I will of Jesus. Hebrews 13 and 5. Keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. You know, people are not content in these days, are they really? Like, through contentment. Keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, now we get that one, for he has said, Jesus said it. For he has said, I, now this is to the believer, by the way, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do unto me. Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way and imitate their faith. And then he says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And there's a lot of people lonely in this coronavirus epidemic and for all the reasons people who have been isolated and we need to be praying much for them and we need to make a phone call to them and, and we need to show all the love we can and, and, and do that please and I know this church is, church is most kind and does all of the above but in all of that there can be a loneliness loneliness is a big thing in society loneliness and perhaps someone just needs to hear today that's locked in their home and, and can't get out in these days maybe even a bit of fear there about the whole thing and hear what God wants to say to you today. I will never leave you nor forsake you. In fact, you know, I was saying about that double negative, I never, never cast you out. And, and actually, again, on looking up uh, a bit of the background to it, this is even stronger. It combines five negatives to indicate the impossibility of deserting his own. This is what it means. I will never, 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 never forsake you. Five. I think the Lord's making a point, isn't he? And if today you feel you're all in your room, and if you love the Lord and know him, I want to tell you today, he said, I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Doesn't matter whether it's in life. It doesn't matter whether it's through the valley of the shadow of death. He says, I will never, ever, ever leave you, nor forsake you. The hymnist said, I've seen the lightning flashing and heard the thunder roll. I felt sin's breakers dashing was tried to conquer my soul. I heard the voice of my Savior. He bid me still fight on. He promised never to leave me. Never to leave me alone. No, never alone. No, never alone. He promised never to leave me alone. Never to leave me alone. No, never alone. No, never alone. And I trust as we wrap up our wee service this morning or today on this Lord's Day, the 13th of September, that perhaps some of these I wills of Christ will speak into your heart. Have a wee think about them through the week. Let them run about through your mind. Meditate upon them. If you're not saved, come to the Christ. If Christ he'll, he'll never cast you out. If you're lonely, stand on the promise, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We pray. Our loving Father, we just thank you for this lovely time of worship this morning in your house, even in these difficult times. And we thank you, Lord, for all we have heard. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of singing that hymn once again, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, 
but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Thank you, Lord, for your great eternal salvation and your great love towards us. We thank you, Lord, for the children's talk. We thank you for the body of Christ, the church, and we thank you for every member, and we thank you everyone's important, and everyone has their wee job to do, and we thank you, Lord, for that. We thank you, Lord, you involve us in this marvelous enterprise, your church, in a local level. And Lord, we just pray for the church today, and we pray for the persecuted church, and we pray for every church that upholds you and is through in terms of Scripture, a scriptural church in this uh, area, in Northern Ireland, or wherever the churches gather today in these difficulties. Will you bless the church? And Lord, build your church as you are. And Lord, help us to be uh, participants in your church and involved in your church the body of Christ. And so, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises. I thank you, Lord, that we can stand on your eye wills. They're certain, they're sure, and you never fail us. And so, Lord, we just thank you for this lovely time together. Continue to bless Jackie and heal her, Lord, and this dear other brother that has been mentioned with COVID that's in a difficult situation. Will you put your loving arms round about him? Will you protect and guard him? Will you bless this lovely congregation of your people here and straight congregation that they'll know the blessing of God? And you'll bless Pastor Paul, you'll bless the deacons, and you'll bless every member, and you'll bless every friend, and you'll bless every boy and girl. And grant, Lord that they'll all know household salvation. And so, Lord, we're going into a new week. Will you go before us? Will you be with us? Will you make us a blessing and make us fishers of men? And I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your time. I do as you're told now what the deacons tell you on the way out and, and whatever. And I think he means to go out and don't stand at the, the, the door. Move out and chat in the car park or whatever. Is that what you're saying, Brian? The Lord bless you, and it's great just to fellowship with you again today. Amen.